Good morning, and welcome to worship on this beautiful Colorado morning. I am Pastor Gail Munt, and I'm delighted to have you here. And on behalf of LCM, welcome to all our, of our visitors. And for those of you joining us online, we welcome you as well, too. We're glad that you can join us online, as well as for these people in person. Uh, the flowers this morning are from Carl Nuremberger's uh, Celebration of Life service. The family thought they were still so pretty that they wanted to share them with us today. Uh, Carla came by this morning, the daughter, and uh, prayers for Mary Lou and for the family. They are moving Mary Lou into assisted living. And um, so, you know, transition's difficult no matter the time in our lives. I also wanted to share with you one more thing. Linda Dalton, uh, LCM's office administrator, her brother passed away this weekend after an extended illness. And so she was leaving on Wednesday for vacation and um, she'll be leaving earlier. The memorial service is in Texas on Tuesday. So I'm sure she'd appreciate your prayers and words of condolences for her there. Uh, and we have, Carl Fath has an announcement for us, please. Have we got a deal for you? <laughs> but you have to ask fast. There's no purchase necessary. So 
Um, if you are so inclined for this great deal, um, you've seen on the table there are ample opportunities to volunteer for little tasks that we have to do here at LCM um, to do outreach, to uh, expand our ministries and stuff like that. Also want to let you know that I'm collecting names for those of you that would like to help with little projects around the building too. This is totally per your ability and per your availability as far as time. So whenever you uh, would like to, I'll send out the task that needs to be done. And if you're willing to do it, then you just respond to me. Just as simple as that. If there's no time to do that specific task, no big deal. It's just a list of people to contact when something needs to be done because we need the help. So um, the details are in the bulletin for both of those uh, items. And um, just contact me and hopefully we'll um, get some people together and build an army to keep this place going. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Ginger is our assisting minister today. Even though it says Dawn, she's not Dawn, she's Ginger. And we're grateful to have you. And Karin will be helping leading us in, worship, in music today. Yay. I invite you to stand as you're able. Come. Join the fellowship of God's people, people who gather as faithful disciples of Christ. We seek the one who frees us from uncertainty and doubt. Come, join the welcome of God's people, people who meet together for justice and peace. We seek the one who is trustworthy, the one who gives us what is good. Come. Join the celebration of God's people, people of the one who was and is and shall ever be. We raise our voices in praise and honor to God and worship the one who is faithful. be seated. From the demands and pressures of this past week, we come, O oh Lord, seeking rest and renewal. Hear the cries of our hearts, our prayers, our needs. Heal and restore us. Amen. Patient Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We crowd in as much activity as we can and then wonder why we are so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes time to be with others, 
we spend our time worrying about details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in our faith. Help us to place ourselves in your care. Slow us down just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and truly enjoy and share the blessings you have given to us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. On the seventh day of creation, God rested, creating a Sabbath, a time set apart for rest, to learn, to listen, to be quiet and at peace. Let Sabbath take root in your heart and in your life. Be at peace in God's love for you. Amen. And we sing the song of praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our ghost amid the cares of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. The Lord visits Abraham and Sarah to tell them that the long-awaited promise of the birth of a child will be fulfilled for them in their old age. The reading. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Memory. As he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on. Since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servants who hastened 
to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in this season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel today is from Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 38th verse. During his visit to the home of Mary and Martha, Jesus reminds Martha that her concern for her many tasks distracts from the one thing that precedes all else, abiding in the presence of God. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I grew up with three sisters. Two were older, one was younger. So I understand that sisters, while sharing the same parents, the same home, the same bathroom, yep, four girls in one bathroom, the same bedroom, that uh, we don't share the same personality or view of the world. And it's easy to imagine that two sisters living under the same roof might not be happy with each other at one time or another, right? That's probably true of brothers as well. But while reading this story of Martha complaining to Jesus about Mary, I can hear echoes of my own voice. My younger sister and I shared a room growing up together, and so there were times that mother would send us to clean the room, clean the closet, make the beds, and I didn't think my younger sister was doing her fair share, and I would call out, Mother, she's not helping. Then my mother would scold her for not working hard enough, and just as I was going to be gloating, because she got into trouble, then I would get into trouble for tattling and not doing what I was supposed to be doing. So from a sister's point of view and from a human point of view, honestly, we think we know what Jesus should be saying after Martha comes to him with this complaint. To be fair, at least in our world, both sisters should be sharing the burden of entertaining, right? They both should be entertaining Jesus and whoever followed Jesus into their house. But Jesus didn't and doesn't here follow the conventional path and say what Martha and honestly what we expected. The importance of hospitality is shown in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. As I've mentioned before, hospitality was and is one of the most highly regarded virtues of the Middle East, now and in the ancient world. And in fact, it was a matter of life and death to travelers. Imagine in that heat and with the lack of water, traveling away from the shade and from the source of water was dangerous. We know that just a couple of weeks ago here in Colorado, did y'all see that? There was a bicyclist on the western slope that died from dehydration. He didn't have enough water. And the two men who were also bicycling who found him were also dehydrated and were airlifted to the hospital 
um, for that. So shade and water equals life. We know that. When we lived in Saskatchewan, we learned from the locals there as well as those in North Dakota that their country style hospitality was also a matter of life and death. Should someone's car break down in the winter, which was bitter cold, is bitter cold, or they lose their way in a blizzard, seeing lights in a house and finding the door unlocked if the residents were home meant that they had a safe and a warm place to dwell until the storm passed and their car was repaired. So in the Old Testament lesson that Gender read, one of the earliest examples we have of hospitality is Abraham in Genesis 18, following the custom of his day and welcoming and feeding three unexpected guests. They were served bread made with the finest flour. Our translation reads choice flour, as well as other choice selections for their dinner. In addition to other stories with similar anecdotes, there are imperative statements throughout the Old Testament about hospitality. The first one I'm going to show, yeah, share with you. Thank you, Jamie. From Leviticus 19, when a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. And from Leviticus 24, you shall have the same rule for the sojourner and for the native. For I am the Lord your God. And then we have this compassionate invitation from Laban when he said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. And in the New Testament, we are given many examples and many exhortations of how we're supposed to treat our neighbors and strangers. This from Romans, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. And from Hebrews, this is one of my favorite and one uh, that my family's lived by. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. From 1 Peter, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Whoops! Whoops, don't raise your hand, but does anybody here grumble when we have to clean the house and prepare a dinner and entertain people? Not I, never. Yeah, yeah, that's not true. From Titus, be hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. And a parable from Jesus included these words. Why don't you read them with me? For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Truly I tell you, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So clearly, the practice of hospitality of serving one another is embedded in the scriptures. Even in this gospel lesson that we read today, where it seems as if Jesus is scolding Martha for her hospitality concerns, y'all, it's set in the midst of stories of giving and receiving and witnessing such acts of kindness and generosity, compassion, and tolerance. This summer, we've already read the story of Jesus sending out the 70 who were dependent on the hospitality of those villages they went to. Last week, we read about the Good Samaritan, and again, the hospitality that the Good Samaritan shown. So that's why it's so disturbing For the Marthas of the world, male and female, the doers, the action-oriented, those who have the gift of hospitality, those who value social ministry and who believe that these gifts are for building up, there's another action word, building up the body of Christ. 
That's why it's so disturbing for Jesus not to commend Martha for her hospitality. He doesn't preface his comment with any flattery, with any applause, with any tribute. Every time I preach on Martha and Mary, I hear from people who never liked this particular passage of the scorn heaped on Martha, the worker bee. Have you, any of you felt this way about this passage? Martha came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Surely, surely, Jesus would at least compliment her on the hard work she has been doing and thank her for hosting the group. But he didn't. He answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. And I think it's important to note, he did see her worry. He acknowledged that. He acknowledged that she was worried and distracted. And in fact, the scripture reads that Martha was dis distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Note, it didn't say Martha was distracted by silliness, by things that weren't important, that didn't need to be done. No, she was distracted by preparations that had to be made. One of the commentaries I read actually criticized Martha and added the comment that if Jesus could feed the 5,000 with fish and loaves, he was pretty sure that Martha didn't need to be so anxious about feeding the Lord. And my first thought was, spoken like a person who's never hosted a party or prepared a dinner for special guests. Of course, Martha would be anxious and distracted. She was hosting the Lord, for goodness sake. And yet, and yet, that's the whole point, isn't it? She was hosting the Lord. By all sense of etiquette and hospitality, she might be doing the right thing. But in doing the right thing, she missed the presence of God. How many times might this be said of us? How many times and in how many ways have our good intentions, our agenda, our busyness removed us from the very purpose and meaning of life? Jesus is not favoring Mary over Martha. He is not lifting up one way of Christian living over another. But he is inviting Martha to release her anxiety, shed her anger and annoyance, be free of the need to be in control. And he is inviting her into the joy of being in his presence. Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and that will not be taken away from her. My paraphrase of this is, dishes will be dirty again. Food will always need to be prepared. The floor, yeah, it needs to be swept or vacuumed. But Martha, I am only here for a short time. This cannot be repeated. Come and sit. As I invite each and every one of you dear shared workers in this kingdom of God, to untie your apron strings for a moment, to put down your to-do list, take off your tool belt, close your tablet, phone, laptop, put aside your chores, and sit at the feet of Jesus and absorb God's love for you today. Certainly, God is present in our work, in our day-to-day -day activities. God is present in our coming in and in our going out. God is present in our world. But sometimes, we get so busy with the busyness of life, with the routine, with the list of the to-dos that need to be done, all the tasks that we need to accomplish today, this week, this month, including, do I dare say, the many tasks that keep us active in this ministry, 
that we too can be distracted from the very presence of our Lord. Uh, what, when we lived, we've lived in Colorado, those of you who know us often own, um, we go away and we come back. For all the years that we've been in Colorado, though, we've had a very special visitor who would come and stay with us on his annual pilgrimage to America. He, like many missionaries, returned to the United States to visit churches, give updates to his supporters, and also to sell olive wood carvings from the Holy Land. His mission was and is to tell the story of the land where Jesus lived and the hardships of the Christians left in the Holy Land. Michael Zobi is his name. And he and his wife, Carmen, actually they're returning to Colorado again. We spoke to them yesterday. And they'll be here in November, so I look forward to introducing him to you and you to him. Uh, and we will help sell the uh, Carver's Olive Wood. This is their support, is what we buy here in the United States. As you might know, there's not many visitors to Bethlehem these days and haven't been for years. And so that's a way that we help and uh, do outreach. Michael and Carmen have six children, five sons, and the youngest, oh, their precious daughter, like ours, they're all grown now, and there's, they have multiple grandchildren. I've lost count. We have fun memories, though, of Michael participating in our family life as our children were growing up. He was here for Halloween, went trick-or-treating with the kids. He spoke in their classrooms, and um, he experienced the luxury of Western automobiles. My husband, without telling him, just turned on the, heat, uh, the seat heater, you know, and Michael was like, ooh, Ooh, what is this? <laughs> so then whenever he'd go into another car, he'd ask them if they had a heater on their seats. We had a lot of laughter and heard a lot of great stories. And there were tears. When Michael was visiting, our dinner times with the family stretched into lengthy evenings of sharing and coziness. And while we usually urged our children to hurry to do their homework and finish their nightly duties, when Michael was there, we found ourselves bending the bedtime rules. And I can remember one particular night, probably his first night there, our children were hanging on to every word and asking him questions about his life and about his family back home. Katrina, our youngest, was very young then and was literally hanging on the arm of his chair. And she began to ask him in earnest personal questions. And he lovingly took her seriously and answered them, and answered all of her concerns. As Randy and I watched this unfold and looked into the faces of our older two children who were listening intently, we realized that we were in the presence of something special and something holy. Not that Michael himself was holy. Oh my gosh, he would never claim that. But his presence invited the presence of the Holy One into our living room. I realized that if I got up and began to clear away the dirty dishes, that the mood would be broken. Later, there would be time for clearing the table, cleaning the dishes, encouraging the children to study and bathe and prepare for bed. But for that moment when it felt like the very presence of God was there among us, we held still and we listened and we experienced joy from this presence of the Holy Land. I hope and pray for you this day, for this season of summer, when we're trying to fit in as much as we can in these warm days to take time to ask to be in the Lord's presence, to seek to sit at his feet, to listen and know that God is holy. And I pray that you experience this holy and the joy that comes from God's very presence. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. 
I invite you to stand as you're able and sing. be seated. God of grace, united in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. You open the doors of your church and community, Lord, to all who feel distant or estranged. Give us courage to share your good news through conversation and love. God of grace, cultivate in all people a care for the world you have made. Make us mindful of our impact on creation for the good of our neighbor and future generations. God of grace, Hear our reconcile and bring peace to communities that suffer and or live on the margins. We pray today for those in the hospitality industry, for those in the cleaning industry, for those who work in nursing homes, hospitals, and living facilities. May they be treated with respect, dignity, and appreciation, and may we help make them that so. God of grace, through Christ you bring peace. Assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers. We pray for those on LCM's prayer list and for the names we say aloud or pray in our hearts. And we pray for wisdom for leaders of the world for peace. We ask prayers for the safety of those who are traveling.
We pray for the person who wants prayers for their brother, Edward Bernard, and Robert Bedard. We pray for the safety of people who are traveling. We pray for Reese as he heads for confirmation camp next week. We ask prayers for the Nuremberg family as they miss Carl. And we pray for Mary Lou Nuremberger as she is moving today. Bless and keep safe campers, counselors, pastors, lay ministers, and families who experience the gift of outdoor ministry at camps this summer. We pray for Addie, Reese, and Pastor Gail at Rainbow Trail this week. Continue transforming them all in Christ once they are safely home. God of grace. God of every time and place in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust those spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Offering plates are on the back tables, should you want to give today. Of course, we um, have receive online as well, too. Having received the grace of God and the redemption of Christ, we live strengthened in the faith, with hearts overflowing with thankfulness. From the depths of our hearts, we offer to God the very best we have. May our offering be a true act of worship and thanksgiving. Before you, O God, we offer our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. We lay our gifts before you in praise and thanksgiving for your many blessings. May these offerings continue the transforming work of your spirit in and through our congregation. Amen. We will pass the peace. Uh, you are, you're welcome to not pass the peace. You can sit. Um, or you can do fist bumps, elbow nudges. You can shake hands. You can bow. And there are um, this hand sanitizers in the back. So when you finish, before we begin the communion liturgy, feel free to use that. And uh, then, then you might not shudder at taking bread and putting it in your mouth. So... As we embrace renew life in Christ, let us extend signs of peace and unity to one another. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share that peace with one another. I kept looking at this couple here going, boy, they look familiar. Well, you know, the Lutheran fabric is interwoven. Um, it's Vic and Lois Hoops. I knew them from Glory of God when my husband was pastor there. Their children uh, participated. And so it's, I won't tell you how many years back. But it's been, so not for me, but okay. <laughs> Vic, were you here at this church? Were you, this, the, so this one. Down there, down there in the old, down there in Alameda and whatever it's called. So Lutheran Church of the Master at the old place. The old place yeah. Okay. Well, we're very fortunate to have you back. Welcome. 
60. Well, there you go. And here we are. And here we are. Thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your service. May God be with you. People of God, open up your hearts. People of God, give thanks to the Lord our God. When we were children running foot loose through grace, you loved us, tender God, dappling the night skies with the bright stars of morning, teaching us to walk the paths of that first dawn, telling us of your dreams for all you created. When in our hurry to greet you, we fell, skinning our knees, you lifted us up in your arms, holding us to your cheeks wet with joy. When we missed your calling us to wash up for dinner, you came and found us taking us by the hand to feed us from Eden's abundance. But when we grew up, we knew more than you, turning to the idols of wealth and power who promised to serve us even as they shackled us, giving ourselves over to anxiety's sweet caress. Yet you are God, not a foolish human. You remain in our midst not to punish or destroy, but to reach out and bring us home to your heart. Therefore, we joyfully lift our voices with those who have gone before us and those who stand before us, singing your praise for your great love. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of steadfast love, all creation thanks you for your wonderful works. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, let us pray that prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A word of instruction is the host will bring you forward. We'll start on this side. And there is uh, regular wafers that I will hand out. There's gluten-free should you want that. Um, I will let you take your own so that there's not cross-contamination. There's wine is with the first server, and then grape juice is the second server. If you prefer to stay in your seat, I can bring communion to you, or we also have communion kits in the back if you're more comfortable with that and not moving forward. We certainly understand that. The most important thing I want you to know, this is not my table. This is not the table of LCM. This is the Lord's table, 
and all are welcome. So come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come, not because of any goodness of your own, but because we all need mercy and help. Come, because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come, because he loves you and he gave himself for each and every one of you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, uh, Reese is going to camp. I'm going to camp. And Addie Berg is going to camp. Reese, would you like to come up here so we can have a prayer for you? And me? I want prayers. (laughs) I'm honest. I'm not a real camper, so we'll see how this week goes. Are you excited? Yeah. We are so excited. This congregation is so excited you are going and that they support you in this with their love and their prayers and their finances. So we thank you for that. So let's pray. Loving and gracious God. Lord, we just thank you so much for the love that this congregation pours upon our youth. And I pray that Reese and that Ryder has a good week, that um, all the campers up there have a safe and a fun time. And Lord, that we are in your presence, that we laugh, that we experience the joy, that we meet new friends, and that we return home safely. Your name we pray. Amen. Thanks. And we'll sing. Please stand.
Thank you both. Thank you, Karen, for your music. We appreciate you sharing it with us. Now hear these words of blessing. Awesome spirit, you have inspired us this day to be witnesses to God's love and power. Help us to be joyful in our service and strong in our faith for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go with God to offer life to those around us. We will gather up the broken to them healing. Let us go with Jesus to wrap people in hope. We will reach out to feed the hungry and shelter the homeless. Let us go with the Spirit to love all those in our midst who have been forgotten. We will take them in our arms and welcome them to our hearts. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.